In 1930, a young German student by the name of Hans von Ohain graduated from high school and began his physics studies at the University of Göttingen, one of the largest aeronautical research centers at the time. Just a few years later, Ohain became interested in developing a new type of engine for aircraft that wouldn't need a propeller in order to function, a so-called jet engine. He earned a PhD in physics and aerodynamics in 1935 and became a junior assistant of Robert Paul, director of the Physical Institute of the University. While working at the university, Ohain applied for a patent on his version of the jet engine. A very similar patent already belonged to Frank Whittle, his British counterpart. However, as these two ideas had major differences, Ohain received his patent. After receiving his patent, Ohain got together with the car mechanic Max Hahn, who built him a prototype of his engine concept. The engine was then brought over to the university for testing, where it ran into several problems and eventually burned out. Both Robert Paul and Hans Ohain believed in this technology and wanted to continue further development, so they decided to approach a well-known German aircraft designer, manufacturer and a member of the Nazi party, Ernst Henkel. Since Heinkel was very passionate about high-speed flight and was keen on discovering new aircraft propulsion, Paul sent him a letter telling him about the potential of Ohain's technology. Not so long after, Ohain met with Heinkel's engineers and in April 1936 he and Max Hahn began working for Heinkel at the Marianne airfield in Rostock. Just after a couple of months, the prototype had undergone several major improvements which led Ohain to build a completely new hydrogen-fueled engine, the Heinkel Jet Engine 1. This engine was tested in early 1937, and despite some minor difficulties, these tests were deemed a success. Nevertheless, this engine was only intended to showcase the potential of the design and was never capable of flying. Flight quality was achieved with the next engine, the Heinkeljet Engine 3. This new model was much the same as its predecessor, the Heinkeljet Engine 1, except it ran on kerosene rather than hydrogen. Tests were made in early 1938 and would show that the engine is not powerful enough yet. In 1939, an improved variation of the Heinkeljet Engine 3 was developed, the Heinkeljet Engine 3A, which would be the first to leave the ground. In May or July of the same year, this engine was air tested in extreme secrecy during early morning hours under the prototype dive bomber Heinkel HE-118. Takeoff and landing were powered by the propeller, while the jet engine was used mid-flight. More of these flights were conducted until the aircraft suffered a fire incident during one of its landings. By this time, the new test aircraft, Heinkel AG-178, was completed and fitted with the newest engine variation, Heinkel Jet Engine 3B. On the 24th of August 1939, it took a short hop as a test before its maiden flight. The big day came on the 27th of August 1939. Just moments before the start of the Second World War, Heinkel HE-178, piloted by Erich Warsitz, made its maiden flight and entered the history books as the first flying jet aircraft. It achieved a top speed of 600 km per hour, or 373 miles per hour. This flight only took about 6 minutes, as fuel ran out very quickly, nevertheless the pilot managed to successfully land the aircraft, marking the end of its maiden flight. Work on the HE-178 was abandoned, although a second prototype was made, but never embarked on a powered flight. The Heinkel company moved on to develop a jet fighter, the Heinkel HE-280. In 1943, the HE-178 was put on display in the Berlin Aviation Museum, where it would rest until being destroyed in an Allied air raid. Despite never entering mass production, the Heinkel HE-178 left a great mark on the history of aviation, and the knowledge gained from its development made aircraft like the infamous Messerschmitt ME-262 the first mass-produced jet fighter possible. Thank you for watching. Until next time, stay curious.